the day that my girlfriend Sandy decided to leave school and go work for her mother as a hairstylist was a sad one for me. We had been dating for close to a year, I had known her mom wanted her to join her, but I felt she would at least finish school first then go and work for her. When she told me of her plans I knew it meant seeing her every day was out of the question as the classes in hairstyling would be time-consuming. Sandy tried to convince me we could still see each other as much as possible, I was a little skeptical as I knew her becoming a stylist would be time-consuming, but we agreed to try as best we could to see one another. One thing I did promise though was to be there and support her if things got difficult for her, I knew her mother was always hard on her and with the added pressure of trying to keep us together might be a chore. I had never been one to impose myself on Sandy and my best wishes were given to her adding I wish I could help her if I could. Well, as luck would have it, it was the last statement that would have me making a decision I never felt I would have to make. Sandy had been doing wonderfully in her classes for the first few months, however her skills she told me were nothing as compared to many of her class colleagues. Her mother had told her that she would in time become quite capable and to just have the patience until she would feel more confident. When Sandy told me what her mom had said I laughed telling her did her mom really did not know her as Sandy was anything but a patient person. It was now Sandy who was laughing and telling me I was so correct there, she then asked me if I was still willing to help her as I had promised that one day. I asked her what she was meaning Sandy then suggested that she could style my hair as it was long enough and then wash or take it out right away. Well to say I was a bit taken back would have been an understatement, but knowing Sandy as I did I trusted her completely, so I told her it would be a pleasure for me to help her out this way, I would also be spending more time with Sandy so I was thinking this will be a good thing. That evening I went with Sandy into her mother's salon. Once inside she locked the door and told me to go sit in the second chair. I did as she asked and soon after that I was being nudged forward so Sandy could shave off all the unneeded hair from my neck area. Once she had done this she told me that doing French braids was her most difficult style so while I sat there watching her in the mirror she proceeded to braid up my hair until she had it to her acceptance. When she was happy she asked what I thought, looking into the mirror I told her it actually looked pretty good on me, my face, although I told her, felt a bit pulled back. Laughing a little Sandy told me she wanted to try double braids for her next style. Again I sat watching as she worked away. As was with her first attempt this one also I told her looked good as she held a mirror behind so I could see how the braids were indeed straight on both sides. In total that night Sandy did up my hair four times in various French braid styles with each result meeting her approval, for me it was both fun and odd to see myself with a feminine style on my hair. Once we had finished we left her mom's salon and locked the door. On our way home Sandy was asking me if I really did not mind helping her out. I told her again it was no big deal and that by helping her out it was my way of showing her my support. Laughing softly she smiled at me and told me that the next style or styles she tries on me might make me change my mind, I just smiled and shook my head in a way to tell her that would not happen. We finally got back to her house and I kissed her goodnight, she told me sleep tight and that I had been such a good sport to help her out. Again I told her it was nothing and any time she wanted to practice on me it was going to be fine and to not worry, Sandy just smiled her wonderful smile and waved to me as I walked off to head home. The next few weeks Sandy and I would go out after dinner, she would tell me how her day went and I would listen to her and tell her how great she was doing, I was always giving her compliments as well if she had a particular good day in her classes. One night, after one of her harder days in school she asked if she could cut my hair into a new unisex cut that they were learning, she assured me it would only be a small change in my style. Of course I told her yes and once we got to her mom's salon my hair was washed which by the way felt great with the new set of nails Sandy had on, she saw my smile and really gave my head a nice massage. A quick towel drying followed and when I was sitting down in the styling chair Sandy combed and sectioned off my hair, she procked to trim away until she had reduced my hair by a few inches. I watched now as Sandy began to dry it, she used a rounded shaped brush as she brought up each area and twirled my hair around it. Aside from my hair appearing much fuller, the style was basically the same as it had been, only neater. Sandy told me my hair was now just right and could be done up in a number of styles, to prove her point she first combed my hair off to one side leaving it looking very ladylike. Next Sandy ran a brush over my hair taking it straight back, she used two clips to hold it in place and again it appeared much different and definitely not masculine. 
Joking I told her that I could pass for one of her girlfriends from the back if someone did not know it was me, Sandy just smiled and returned my hair back to its regular look. With this night of haircutting and showing me how it could look so different over we left the salon and walked to her home. Along the way Sandy began to tell me she was going to be taking an advanced course in makeup artistry as part of her classes and that maybe I would have to be her model for this as well. Not wanting to discourage her I let her know that I was game as long as she had no problem with me looking better than she, I winked at her as I said this. Sandy giggled and held my hand telling me I could make a cute girl if she wanted me to appear that way. Not much more was said as I kissed her goodnight, I watched as she walked up the stairs to her house, she turned back to wave as she disappeared behind the front door. I walked home wondering to myself if Sandy would ever make me over totally, the thought actually intrigued me some and I decided to let her know that I was more than game for this to happen. The very next day when I met with Sandy after her class I confessed to her that I would like her to try and make me over, she at first looked stunned, and then she grinned and took me by the hand. In no time we were walking through the door of her mom's salon, Sandy told me to go over to the wash sink and sit and wait for her. I did as she asked and a few minutes later Sandy was standing over me smiling while she placed a pink cape around my neck, it fell down to cover my shoulders as well. Sandy then leaned me back and began to wash my hair, as she liked to do. Sandy massaged my head with those long nails of hers. I told her it always felt so good to have her do this, she did not need to answer as her smirk told me she already knew. Once my hair was washed, conditioned, and rinsed Sandy wrapped my hair into a towel and led me over to her mom's work area. I sat down and made myself comfortable as Sandy prepared what she was going to use, she first rolled over a three-level tray filled with an assortment of colored curlers, all in various sizes. After that she removed the towel from my head and began to squirt a sweet-smelling liquid over my hair, she combed this through making sure all the ends were saturated. Next Sandy sectioned off my hair, I watched her intently as she then combed up a small patch of hair from my crown. Her hand then reached over and found a medium-sized red curler, a moment later she was winding my hair around it and pinning it into place. This step was repeated by Sandy until had my entire head was covered in red, blue, and green curlers. I was guessing but there must have been at least 50, but I was not exactly sure. A pink hairnet was next and Sandy tied it in place after carefully getting it over the curlers. One of the large bonnet-type hair dryer was turned on. Once the heat was active Sandy helped getting me under the hood, the warmth from it felt very comfortable. Sandy now set a timer and showed it to me, it was set to go off in 45 minutes, she handed me a few magazines to read while she went off and arranged the rest of what she going to use on me to make me appear ladylike. I was not sure if it was the heat from the dryer or my being overtired but I somehow fell asleep, Sandy had to nudge me to have me awake. The time had expired and the timer was buzzing. I felt a bit groggy as I slid from under the dryer's bonnet. Sandy helped me back to the styling chair and sat me down, my eyes slowly began to focus as I could see and feel her starting to remove the curlers. One by one Sandy removed each curler, a wonderful wave fell down to rest just above my shoulder, it was hard to believe that my hair had taken the curl so easily. As the last of the curlers were removed I was left sitting there with a mass of longish curls hanging down around my face, it was really incredible to see myself looking this way. My eyes followed Sandy's movements as she first picked up a long-tailed comb, with this she began to separate each curled section, once satisfied she had just one part she teased away until all the hair was in a puffball as I could best describe it. Each time she did this procedure my hair seemed to grow in mass, it was looking like I had so much hair. I was astonished as Sandy finished her teasing, my hair stood up and out everywhere, she then picked up a can of hairspray, she made sure she sprayed every area of my hair. After this she used an odd-shaped comb and bobby pins to hold my hair into the place she was combing it. Sandy toiled away combing and pinning my hair until she had got the style she wanted, it was what she called a beehive bubble. I looked in the mirror and saw a large bubble shape that was indeed large on top on my head, at the sides she had smoothed it down and made a flip that darted outwards. My bangs were the big thing though, Sandy had shaped four thickish chunks that had separation from one another, almost a piano key outline. Watching her still she picked up the hairspray can once more and sprayed and smoothed away at my hair until it held solidly in place. 
Stepping back now Sandy asked me what I thought of her creation, I looked up at her and told her it looked fabulous, my hands were actually trembling as I reached up to touch my new feminine hairstyle. It was quite something and it suited my facial shape perfectly, Sandy had chosen the ideal style and now she was grabbing at my hand and taking me back to another area in her mom's salon. Soon I was sitting back down as Sandy began to cover my face with a warm towel, this stayed on my face for close to five minutes. When the towel was removed Sandy spread a cream over my face and then using a razor she removed any signs of my generally thin facial hair. As she finished shaving me Sandy then rubbed a soothing and sweet smelling lotion over my face and neck areas, this lotion was cool and my face felt like it was tightening a little. On my lips she used a brush to paint on a clear coat of what she called a lip enhancement, I was turned away from the mirror now as well so I could not see what if any effect this had on my lips. One thing I could sense was that my lips were tingling and getting warm feeling, Sandy watched for a minute or so and smiled as she told me it was working as it should. I was now told to hold still as Sandy picked up a pair of tweezers, she told me she was just going to thin out my brows so I would have the total experience of having a ladle-like face. This process only took her ten or so minutes and when she was done plucking away she nodded her approval towards me. With this now taken care of Sandy began to rub a foundation over my facial areas, she used a wedge-shaped sponge to spread this out evenly. My brows were then colored in with her using a black shaping pencil, this was also used on the upper and lower parts of my eyelids, and this I was told would make my eyes stand out once a shadow was applied. Sandy used a brush in various shades of browns, purples, and tans over my eyelids, the brush tickled a bit as she applied a large amount of shadow to each eye area. This was finally completed and using a different sized brush now sandy color in my cheeks with a blush that was a warm shade of red. My still tingling lips were first outlined with a deep red lip pencil, sandy then used a tube of lipstick in a lighter shade to fill in what was left on my lips not yet colored. A quick inspection was done by Sandy before she took out a set of false eyelashes, she took each lash from its box and ran a thin line of glue over each. These sat for a minute or so until the glue was tacky as she called it, she then used a q-tip to attach each false lash over my own. I instinctively began to blink as I was not accustomed to the weight of my new lashes, this only lasted for a few seconds though as I rapidly became more comfortable with this newfound feeling. Standing back to admire her work Sandy told me I would not believe it, she then used a black pencil to place a beauty mark just over my lip. Only one thing remained I was told and that was to have gold clip on earrings attached to each lobe, as this was done I was slowly turned in the chair until my reflection was in the mirror. My mouth dropped as the image looking back at me was quite attractive and beyond no doubt female appearing. Even though the hairstyle Sandy had done on me was an older fashioned one with piano chunks for bangs I still looked very good. I think even Sandy was taken back by my emergence as a female. The one thing that really caught my eyes were my lips, whatever Sandy had put on them certainly gave them a larger appearance, I loved how I looked and I told Sandy it was even better than I had thought it might have come out. She looked at me quizzically and asked if I would like to take this a step further next time. By that she was meaning did I want to do a full molly as she worded it. I had to ask her what she was meaning as the wording was unfamiliar to me. Sandy said to me that she could get all the necessary articles of clothing and shoes to have me looking a lady like as any woman could. She added that since I seemed to be into this I might as well explore it fully to see if I wanted to appear as her girlfriend rather than her boyfriend. Well it was decision time now, so I told Sandy that I had been wondering about this since the first day she did my hair into French braids, that day, I told her, stirred something inside I was very hesitant of. Sandy looked hurt but she said it would take her about a week to obtain all that she would need, we agreed to let her have full control of how everything would go, I totally agreed to whatever she would do without questioning her at all. So with all said and now accepted I was returned to my male self, Sandy hugged me goodbye at the door and she went home to make the plans to give me the full molly next week. That week went by ever so slowly as I had dreams at night of how I may look once Sandy had worked her magic on me. Finally though the night came and I arrived at her mom's salon ready for whatever she had in store for me. Sandy was already inside, she had a workstation all set up for me, I was motioned over and I sat right down. Sandy told me first off my ears would be pierced with three holes each, I sat still while she used a gun-like device to secure three gold studs to each of my lobes. 
I thought they looked great and Sandy told me that in a week or so I could wear different sizes of hoops to give me a feminine look as the holes would have fully formed by then. Her attention then went to my hair as she told me she was going to give me a very thick type of spiral perm, I asked her if that meant the curls would not wash out, she told me yes and if I was having second thoughts I best leave now. My head shook to her to say no, she grinned and lead me over to the wash sink. A fast wash was done and I was soon back in her styling chair, as before Sandy rolled over a cart, however this time instead of curlers it contained orange perm rods. I was handed a box of end papers Sandy called them, I was to give her one each time she requested one. She started by combing up about an inch wide strand of hair, she then gave it a small twist and held out her hand for a paper, I gave one to her which she folded over the top twist of hair and then she proceeded to roll up my hair into the rod. She pulled a rubber band over and then stuck the end into the perm rod, it held tightly, Sandy then again rolled up a second width of hair. This process took much longer than the previous week as Sandy got over 90 perm rods spread over my head. Cotton batten was formed around the edges from the back and tucked under the front perm rod. She then brought a bottle of horrid smelling liquid and began to saturate each and every perm rod. I could feel a heat building up as Sandy placed a plastic cap over my head, I would now have to wait until the curl took in all the rods, even Sandy did not really know how long this may take, but she guessed a half hour to 45 minutes. Now while we waited Sandy brought out a device that looked like a small sander, with this she roughed up all my nails. After this she glued a nail extension over my own nails, these extensions were close to an inch long, I thought to myself is this ever going to be great? The extensions were then filed and shaped until they appeared as ladies' nails would. Polish followed and a deep red coat was applied twice. A clear top coat followed this which gave my new nails a wonderful shine. I wiggled my fingers and admired them, and Sandy told me to be careful now as I was not too used to the extra length. I heeded her warning as she then took a perm rod out to check the curl. She was satisfied as she led me back over to the wash sink, and the perm rod was put back in and snapped into place. The water was run warm and the perm solution was rinsed away, after this another whitish liquid was squirted over each rod, this I was told would harden the curls and make them stay in shape for a longer period. Fifteen minutes had passed, Sandy then rinsed my hair while still in perm rods, and once the rinsing was completed all the rods were removed. Sandy told me that the curls were perfect and that I would be soon having a very girlish head of curls. Smiling I nodded as to say yes this is good. A short towel drying was done and I was soon sitting under four heat lamps. These I was told would allow the curls to dry and form in a more natural way. To help pass the time Sandy removed my shoes and socks and gave me a pedicure, when she had completed this my toenails were now painted in the same color as my fingernails, they also looked fabulous to me, I was so into what was happening it was unreal. Sandy had looked up and her face told me my hair was drying just as it should, she brought over a mirror and I could see the curls falling down and ringlets framing my face and making me look so pretty. I told Sandy that this was so great and that my having the full molly would be something I would never forget. Sandy frowned at my words as she removed the heat lamps. She said to me that by the time she was done tonight I would be as full a woman as she with only one exception. I was now sitting back at her work area, Sandy applied a pink liquid over my face, and it almost burned as it needed to be on me for ten minutes. As the time passed the burning subsided, the timer went off and Sandy used a hot cloth to remove the paste that had formed on my face. Looking into the mirror I could see no trace of facial hair whatsoever, it was not like last week when I could see an outline of beard the gloss Sandy used on my lips was applied on three times this week, my lips once more tingled as they had, but this time it much more intense. She also used a wax to reshape by eyebrows, Sandy brushed it on then using a cloth she pressed it over the waxed area and pulled it off quickly. This was repeated many times and when finished my brows were both arched very feminine and thin, they looked so good to me I thought. Thinking it was time for Sandy to put my makeup on was the wrong thing as she had me totally undress and lie down on a gurney type bed. She then used the same pink liquid to spread over my body and legs, she was making sure it was on thick. My back area was done first, when the time was up Sandy washed away the liquid and had me turn over on my back so she could apply the liquid to my front side. Sandy took particular care around my penis as she wanted to give me the perfect heart-shaped mound as she called it to give me a more realistic effect. 
While I laid there Sandy brought out a syringe, it was filled with a chemical she told me that would enlarge my breasts, it was a special formula she had found on the internet and it was guaranteed to give wonderful results. Sandy used alcohol to clean my nipples, she then injected a tube each in through the middle part of my nipple. This caused me some pain and I moaned loudly, Sandy said to me that in an hour or so if she mixed the formula properly I would be close to 40 inches with a C cup. A fear came over me now as my heart began to pound, I thought to myself what have I done? As my chest burned, Sandy told me that I had conveyed to her that I wanted the full molly so she was obliging me totally, there was no turning back now. The pink hair remover on my front side was cleaned off and I was now ready for my new waist. Sandy had brought out a Victorian style corset and she was wrapping over my midsection. I had to hold onto the top part as she laced up the back area, once done doing that Sandy pulled the laces tightly and my waist was reduced to 30 inches. Catching my breath was difficult, but I soon learned how to breath wearing this garment. Looking down I could see how thinly my waist looked, I could also see the beginning of small breasts forming on my chest. Next Sandy took out a gaff and tied my penis in and under itself. She pushed my balls up inside before sliding a tight rubberized pair of panties up onto my hips. It was uncomfortable to say the least but as I looked down, my front section was flat as could be with no telltale bulge to give me away. Nylons followed with black seams running down the back of my legs, Sandy made them straight as she then slipped four-inched heels with ankle straps onto each foot. I was now made to walk with Sandy helping me get used to these heels. I had soon mastered them and was walking for her to see. What followed next was Sandy getting me into a very tight black leather mini shirt that showed off my legs. A black bra was now fitted over my growing breasts, the cups were filled nicely as she clipped it in place, I made a movement as to bounce and my tits jiggled just ever so much, the feeling made my arms shiver and goosebumps appeared over them. Sandy stood back to look as if something was just not quite right, she told me my breasts were not quite a C cup but close enough for now. I had to ask her if these new breasts of mine would fade away, laughing at me Sandy said no and told me I would have these for quite some time unless she decided to make them larger. Going on further she told the molly treatment she had discovered on the internet was not reversible so I had better get used to my new image. Her words shocked me as I had only wanted to see myself appear as woman this one time, Sandy disagreed with me telling me every step she had done so far had given me more pleasure than I had ever experienced in my life. I had to think back and I could see how from my reaction each time she tried a hairstyle on me she would have come to this conclusion. Even my telling her how I wanted to go through with all of this was proving to her I wanted to try the female lifestyle, so now with what Sandy had done I was going to get my chance it seemed. My head was spinning as Sandy had me put on a very red blouse. I placed my arms through the sleeves and did up the buttons. In front the material hung down on both sides. Sandy came over and tied these two sides together to make it form tightly around my waist. She opened the top two buttons to partially show off my new cleavage. I was now fully dressed and staring at myself in the mirror, my figure was most definitely female and my hair with the sausage curls cascading down my face certainly made me attractive. Even my lips although not yet painted with lipstick stood out as they were full and thick in their appearance. My train of thought was broken as I was so mesmerized by the new me, Sandy was calling me over to her work area. Sitting down for her she began to rub a moisturizing cream over my face, it was cool and had a very pleasant odor. A light foundation was then sponged over my features, Sandy told me I would no longer have to worry about a beard or any other hair for that matter except for what was on my head. Eye shadow followed, then my brows were colored in and cheeks touched with just a hint of rouge. My lips were lined and filled in with a red that matched my toes and nails, mascara coated my lashes and for the final touch Sandy used the gun-like device to pierce my nose leaving me with a small gold ball. Now completely made over I got up and went over to the full-length mirror, my reflection was astonishing as I looked every bit a woman and an attractive one at that. I could feel myself slowly warming to enjoying myself dressed fully as this. I turned to tell Sandy my feelings and emotions at this time, but she placed a finger over my mouth. It seemed one more change was still required as she held up an atomizer filled with clear liquid, she asked me open my mouth wide and when I did as she asked a mist was sprayed into it. I could feel a prickling in my throat, it only lasted for a moment and when Sandy asked to say I am Molly out loud my voice came out as a woman's. 
The sound of it made me wonder who said that, but I soon realized it was without a doubt me and I loved it as I smiled at Sandy. It seemed I was now as much a female as Sandy said I would be with that one exception, my new body felt incredible as I ran my hands up my sides and through my hair. The pleasure I felt when I touched my breasts sent a shiver through my entire body, my nipples reacted and stood straight out showing an outline through the blouse I wore. Oh my god I thought this is such a delight and such a turn on for me, Sandy was off to the side giggling softly. She told me I was a knockout in the looks department. Sandy let me lap in my new self before telling me she had wonderful plans for us, it seems she had this idea and she told me of it. She was saying how great it would now be if I chose to go to her beauty school and become a stylist as she was going to be. Sandy told me that we then could be partners and open our own salon and work as girlfriends making women beautiful. Looking at her I was stunned as I found myself agreeing without ever thinking what about the old me, what will people think when Brian does not return to school, my parents, everything. Fear was setting in now as I became conscious of this fact and would now have to forget my old life and accept this new one as Molly. Could I do this I wondered? My feelings were being pulled as I stared at the new me. I felt so much pleasure looking this way, and I then thought of my old life, it was not perfect. But again, it was my life. I looked at Sandy, she told me all done tonight was permanent, my breasts, hairless face and body, my voice, the only thing male left was my penis and that she told me could also be taken care of. As for us she went on, I could be her girlfriend, co-worker, and lover, she told me. It sent a tingling through her body to think of us making love. To prove her point she came up to me and ran her hand gently over my breasts, the sensation sent a quivering throughout my body, it was unlike anything I had ever experienced. With her hands still fondling me our lips met, we kissed passionately, my pulse quickened and my breath became rapid, it was a wonderful emotion to be aware. In no time before when Sandy and I had kissed did I experience such passion or pleasure. As our kiss ended I told her that I wanted to be her girlfriend for now and evermore. Sandy said to me that she had known for a long time that I had feminine tendencies, doing my hair proved it to her and once makeup was added she was totally convinced I would like to be female. Her words sounded so correct to me, she had somehow seen from my actions that I had indeed given off the characteristics of certain feminine traits. I mean I actually had a manicure before Sandy and I spoke about hair with her mom more times than I could count. Now to be given an opportunity to live my life as a woman was a gift to me by Sandy that she surely could not apprehend. I now knew from this moment on that living as Molly was the right passion for me and from my brief encounter with Sandy's touch I knew it was destined to be. The very next day when I awoke to Sandy's fondling of my breasts did I realize it was not a dream, all my inner feelings were out and Molly was now one day old. Sandy would begin to teach me to be a woman, I would learn my lessons well and not forget them either. My new identity was beginning and the excitement I was feeling gave me a sense of well-being and happiness. Sandy helped me every step of the way and she always was there to be my best friend. When the day came to register at the hairstyling school, Sandy was there, she assisted me through my courses. I worked part-time for her mom until I graduated, then Sandy and I opened our own salon, it was a great success in its first few months, we learned to make customers feel special and from there it was all smooth sailing. On the day I was to lose my remaining male self, Sandy was there again to hold my hand, and once the operation was completed Molly was full of love for her girlfriend and lover. I am so glad all this happened in my life, Sandy loves me and I love her, being a woman is wonderful and exciting. As a man my life was just so-so, but as Molly the world is at my fingers and living happily as I now am is all one could ask for.